for the third uh, parasite to talk about cystoisospora. So cystoisospora is very much similar to the first two. However, it is more common in small institutions, in crowded institutions such as prisons, daycare centers, etc. Very similar to cyclospora. It's endemic in trop tropical and subtropical countries and similar to cryptosporidiosis, it primarily affects immunocompromised hosts. It is of the genus species Cyclospora, Acistoisospora belli, or Isospora belli. So that's similar with each other. So they are synonymous with each other. Cystoisospora is also called your Isospora, with the species belly. Okay. As you can see, it's very much morphologically dissimilar to the first two. The sporozoid inside is circular, making it a coccidian. However, the cyst wall is actually ellipsoidal in nature or cigarette shaped. Okay, so the el the the oocyst is ellipsoid, while the sporozoid growing inside is actually circular in nature. Okay, so similar to the first two, sporulated oocysts would be the infective stage. So what happens after ingestion, very similar, going into the intestines where they undergo both sexual and asexual reproduction. So we all know that. Okay, similar to what? So this is similar to which one? Which of the first two? Cryptosporidium or Cyclospora? You have to find out. So these oocysts then exit the host through the stool and similar to what again? It undergoes sporulation in the outside environment. So before it becomes your sporozoid, it, becomes sev uh, it undergoes several stages such as sporoblastosis, sporocystosis, and becoming eventually your sporozoid inside your oocyst. So this is very similar to cyclospora and cryptosporidium, a very circular life cycle. And you also have your both asexual and sexual life cycle happening inside your intestinal epithelial cell. Now the symptoms, severe diarrhea again, severe watery diarrhea of both your immunocompetent and immunocompromised individuals. However, it is more severe, of course, in immunocompromised patients. This symptom here, or sign here, is actually the hallmark of isospora infection when you are considering either of the three. Eosinophilia is a hallmark attribute of cystoisospora infection compared with cryptosporidium and cyclospora. So microscopy techniques will also be used to visualize your cyst wall and the sporozoid inside. As you can see, you have two sporoblasts inside. Your differential interference contrast also produces a single oocyst with two sporoblasts growing inside to form two sporozoids. A FECT or your fecal um, a formalin ether concentration technique. It's not really a diagnostic tool, but it is used to, to, to concentrate the sample for better viewing. Again, acid fat and saffronin stain would also help you stain your uh, cystoisospora. Again, the shape of the cyst is cigar shaped or parang butil lang kanin. This one, it is green, so it is not acid fat, although it is shaped like your cystoisosporosis, that is actually a yeast uh, cell. So it is not acid fat. So this is the only one that's acid fat, this one. So that is your cystoisosporosis. Okay, since it is it produces eosinophilia, you can conclude that cystoisospora is very much invasive in nature and tends to linger inside your epithelial cells. Therefore, duodenal biopsies can also uh, help you diagnose them using biopsies, of course, biopsies.
biopsy of the duodenal intestinal mucosa. And you can see the cysts there inside. You can also do your string test or your entero test. I'm sure you've already, you already know about entero tests. So this, this pill here goes inside, going into your duodenum, and the duodenal aspirate will actually contain your isospora cysts congregating inside your duodenum. Treatment, very similar to cyclospora, cotrimoxazole or trimetoprim, sulfamatoxazole. Actually, uh, I want to go back to this slide. Your cotrimoxazole is highly effective against a lot of protozoans. So if you're going to think of an antibiotic, which has a lot of uh, antiprotozoan uh, activity, first of, uh, the first drug that you should think of is cotrimoxazole. Prevention control, of course, I'm going to leave that blank. So you have to figure out how to prevent and control your cystospora based on its life cycle and symptomatology. 